Here we have an image of NGC 281. We've already applied a color calibration and the stretch, and now we're going to enhance the details in the nebula. We're going to do this with MLT. Here we simply increase the bias in the layers with structures 2 or 4 pixels in size, and we apply the process to the preview. By applying this process, we've enhanced the details of the nebula, but we've also completely saturated the stars. The process also causes ringing around many of the stars. To prevent these negative side effects, we can use a star mask. We're going to apply this mask to the image of the nebula. We invert the mask because this means we can enhance the details of the nebula but preserve the original stars. To prevent ringing, we also need to make sure that the mask doesn't just cover the stars but also the areas around them. Let's make a copy of the preview to compare the process. We duplicate the zoom and pan too, then apply the process again. When we compare the two previews, we can see that in the new one, the stars aren't distorted, but we have enhanced the details in the nebula. Now we're going to apply a process to reduce the size of the stars and give them less overall weight in the image. Let's accumulate the process. First, we need to modify the star mask. Why do we need to do this? Because to reduce the size of the stars, we need to adjust their centers, but not the areas around them, as the aim of this process isn't to prevent ringing. We therefore need to reduce the size of the stars in the mask. If we look at the processing history of the star mask, we can see that the process that increases the size of the stars is a morphological transformation. If we only want to adjust the centers of the stars, we can skip this morphology step and move straight on to the convolution. We apply it, and the morphology process has disappeared from the mask's processing history. Let's change the identifier. Now we're going to apply the star reduction with morphological transformation again. We select Morphological Selection as the operator, lower the Amount and Selection values, and select two iterations. Finally, we hide the mask, then apply the process. The effect is quite subtle, but we can increase the aggressiveness by accumulating the process and applying two more iterations with this other structure. We change the structure so that the stars don't gradually acquire the shape of the selected structuring element. Now we have three processes. If we compare the image with the previous result without a mask, the difference is quite clear. We've enhanced the details and reduced the weight of the stars. We can compare it with the original image, too. If we open this preview's processing history, we can see that we have three processes. The first is the detail enhancement, applied with the star mask inverted, and the next two are the star reductions applied without inverting the mask. However, if we apply these three processes to the main view, we're going to encounter a problem. If we apply the three processes directly, the masks won't be applied correctly. This is because in the first detail enhancement process, the mask wasn't in this state. It had the larger stars. If we apply the processing sequence now, the masks will be the ones for the image whose identifier is specified in the sequence, but that image is applied as a mask in its current state. So, whenever we want to apply a processing sequence to another view, all the masks must be in the state in which they were originally applied. This means that, rather than modifying the mask, we need to duplicate it so that we have two different masks. Let's go back in the processing history to the point where we need to duplicate the masks.
Here we change the identifier to star mask 1. At this point, we create a copy. This one will be star mask 2. We have the processing of the mask saved here in this icon. Star mask 1 will need the morphological transformation and the convolution. Star mask 2 only needs the convolution. So now, in this preview, we're going to rebuild the three steps in the processing sequence with the correct masks. The first one will be star mask 1, inverted. With this mask, we enhance the details. We accumulate the process, and now we select star mask 2, not inverted, and we work on the stars. We can apply the same processes if we open the processing history of the previous preview. We click the Stick button on the History Explorer window, open the first Morphological Transformation process, Accumulate, and open the second one. Now, if we load this processing history, we can see that there are two different masks here. Now we could apply the whole processing sequence to the main view and it would be applied correctly. Let's look at another issue. The detail enhancement process was applied to the whole image, including the areas with a lower signal-to-noise ratio where there is hardly any nebulous signal. In these areas, all we've done is enhance the noise. We're going to improve this process now so that it only affects the inside of the nebula and protects the stars at the same time. To do this, we have a lightness mask. We made this mask by simply applying histogram adjustments and curves and isolating the large structures. We can combine this mask with this star mask. We're going to do this using pixel math and this equation, lightness mask multiplied by inverted star mask 1. And we apply this to star mask 1. Now the stars are black and the nebula is white. This means that we're going to enhance the details inside the nebula, avoiding the background while also protecting the stars. As the stars are black, we don't need to invert this mask now. Let's create a new preview. We open the processing history of the previous preview, duplicate the zoom and pan, and now we're going to work on this preview. First, we apply star mask 1 without inverting it, and we apply the structure enhancement process. As you can see, now the areas of the background are protected, as are the stars. With this new mask, we're not enhancing the noise in the background, but we are enhancing the details inside the nebula. Now we select star mask 2 so that we can do the star reduction. We apply the first process. And the second one. If we apply these three processes to the main view now, we won't have any problems with the masks. Why were we able to modify the first mask? We modified it, but it's being applied to this processing sequence in its current state. If we apply the three processes now, they will all be applied correctly.
If we look closely, we can see that the image has been processed and the previews have updated to match the current state of the main view. In fact, if we open their processing histories, we'll find that they're empty. If we undo the process in the main view, we'll see the processes in the previews processing histories again. And in the history of the main view, we can see the process container with the three processes applied. If I told you that I don't know where I'm going, don't know what to say, but I go without knowing. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper